Mr. Chairman, and other members of the Zara Club. My name is Adam Albion, and I deeply apologize for the sudden change in plans that prevents me from joining you. But it won't stop me sharing, as promised, some thoughts about the presentation of Islamic art in museums of Southeast Asia. That's where my work happens to be, and I feel there are some interesting comparisons and lessons for us, especially as our beloved museum in Berlin rethinks itself and its mission. In Europe, Islamic art typically means or suggests the Middle East, with a bit of Central Asia, Moorish Spain, and the Mughals on the side. Meanwhile, the largest Islamic nation on earth is Indonesia, and the character of Islam amidst the torrid oceans and the humid jungles of Southeast Asia is different. And that difference is reflected in the way that museums in Southeast Asia aim to situate their exhibits as part of mainstream Islamic art with its gravitational center in the Middle East, yet different from it. I'll begin by focusing on the Islamic Arts Museum in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. The first point to make is obvious, but important. Unlike the Islamic Art Museum in Berlin, which is exhibiting an exotic and essentially foreign culture, since Islam is the state religion of Malaysia, the primary purpose of the museum there is to showcase the nation's culture and heritage. The National Mosque of Malaysia is right next door, visible through the windows. On the museum labels, Muhammad's name is captioned with peace be upon him to reflect the religious sentiment of the majority of Malaysian visitors. Even more than, say, the museums of Islamic art in Doha or Cairo, where visitors are invited to step back and admire the panorama of civilizational achievements of the Muslim world, the museum in Malaysia is trying to tell the story of Islamic art very much to Malaysian visitors as our story. There are some surprises as a result. The famous Javanese and Malay Chris daggers with their wavy blades become Islamic art. So do the colorful batik hangings characteristic of the region. So do batik clothes and sarongs. This wooden wall and door may be the Malaysian Museum's Mashata facade. It's a part of traditional Indonesian architecture for homes owned by Muslim merchants but incorporating Islamic, Chinese, Hindu, Buddhist, and European motifs and ideas. For those of us who are Middle East-centric, it's a jolt to discover Islamic art that includes shells, banana leaves, and pineapples. Officially, Malaysia is an Islamic nation, but in reality, it's multicultural with three major ethnic groups, Malay, Chinese and Indians. Inter-ethnic relations are not always good, so it's significant that an explicit aim of the museum is to encourage social unity, to highlight the common cultural heritage of Malay, Chinese, and Indians through Islamic art. The museum information boards frame this mission by offering very wide and inclusive definitions of Islamic art. To qualify as Islamic art, it's sufficient to have been created under the rule of a Muslim dynasty, or commissioned by Muslim patrons, or produced by Muslim craftsmen. It's characterized by having Arabic writing, or basic decorative elements such as a repeating geometrical and plant design, and it usually consists of objects of daily use. Under these definitions fall the items in the museum's Chinese section. Chinese galleries are something that we in the West, forgetting the large Muslim areas in China, don't typically expect to find in an Islamic art museum. This Chinese Quran was in fact the museum's first acquisition. So-called Islamic Chinese porcelain and bronzes were manufactured to export to Persia, India, and the Ottoman Empire. The Indian sections are more conventional, 
focusing on Mughal miniatures, weapons, glassware, and metalwork. Most of the specifically Malay artifacts are Qurans. However, the common message for ethnically Malay, Chinese, and Indian Malaysians visiting the museum is that the cultures of their ancestors transmitted through Islam are all important components of the modern Malaysian melting pot. From the more canonical Middle Eastern traditions, the museum also has manuscripts, metalwork, jewelry, and its own Damascus room, the only one preserved in Southeast Asia. If we turn to the National Museum of Indonesia in central Jakarta, this is the old wing, the new wing, we find a very different approach. The museum contains numerous interesting Islamic artifacts. This is a jacket covered in Arabic script, serving as a protective talisman against enemy attacks. This is a winding sheet for burial made of basurek fabric. Basurek means having writing on it, and it's an adaptation of Indonesian textile techniques by immigrants from Saudi Arabia. A sultan's tombstone dating to 1428 and bearing Quranic verses. Water containers for ablutions before Muslim prayers. However, none of these objects are described or exhibited in the museum as Islamic art, nor is there an Islamic art gallery or section. The museum chronology does refer to an Islam period, but only as one of the periods in Indonesia's history, the 15th to 17th centuries, succeeding a thousand years of the Hindu-Buddhist period, and followed by the colonial period and the modern period. In other words, Indonesia is not currently in the Islam period, and Islamic art is not stressed or privileged in the museum in any way. What I am identifying as Islamic objects in the museum are spread among a large collection of other artistic and ethnographical exhibits. Why does Indonesia handle this so differently from Malaysia? These are issues of religious policies and national identity. 87% of Indonesians are Muslim, but constitutionally, Indonesia is a secular state with a five-point national ideology, the first point of which is belief in the one and only God. So the omission of any special reference to art that is Islamic rather than just Indonesian is deliberate. Furthermore, Indonesia has over 300 ethnic groups. Its worries about ethnic disunity are at least as great as Malaysia's. But whereas the Malaysian Museum talks about bringing Malays, Chinese, and Indians under one cultural roof about Islamic art as a homogenizing influence, the Indonesian Museum's position is to emphasize the country's cultural diversity and multi-ethnic nature in the hope of promoting mutual appreciation and understanding. From this standpoint, Islamic art in Indonesia is only one of the many ingredients in the country's vibrant mix. Mr. Chairman, I beg pardon and trust that I have not overly taxed the patience of the Zara Club today. I hope that some of these thoughts and considerations were interesting, useful. I do believe that in an increasingly multicultural Europe, in an increasingly multi-ethnic Germany, with Turkish immigrants and Syrian refugees, our museum has an important role to play, and that there are ideas that we can take from as far off as Southeast Asia. And in fact, in the museum in Kuala Lumpur, I saw this little sign on the wall, seek knowledge even as far as China. It's a good thought, and we remain always students. Thank you very much.